Hey, hey, Brian Miller here, and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. And today, we are talking about a piece of hardware processing gear. This is what you would call outboard gear, and it's actually a piece of hardware designed to do a bunch of the things that we're so used to doing in software. This is back in the old days of analog when they used to actually use physical piece, like like physical, actual, real things to produce audio. Well, that's that's what this is right here. This is actually a channel strip. It's a very small, uh, relatively affordable, but professional grade channel strip. And what a channel strip has is three components. It's got a preamp, it's got a compressor, and it's got an EQ. Preamp, compressor, EQ. And the reason we're taking a look at this today is because I have never owned a hardware channel strip or really any hardware gear at all for processing audio. I mean, apart from, you know, guitar pedals and things like that, um, I've always spent my entire time in the audio world in the box, which is what they call uh, doing processing in the computer. And uh, yeah, for the first time ever, I own a piece of audio hardware, which means I'm learning how to use this uh, just like you might be if you picked it up for the first time. And so I thought what we could do is uh, take a, a little exploration of this device, what it does, and test it out on just voice, spoken word. And, and probably we need some context here. The reason I picked this up is because I've been doing a lot more live streaming over the last six to eight weeks, as so many people have, uh, given the current situation that we are all in. Of course, a huge part of my work is live streaming. In fact, most of my work is doing private live streaming or public live streaming, uh, running workshops, doing coaching and consulting, um, doing bonus live episodes of my podcast. And I realized very quickly that all of my professional grade audio gear doesn't sound as good on live streams because the live streaming software typically assumes the way they've built these softwares, they assume that you're using kind of a consumer grade USB microphone. And so what happens is when you're using professional grade gear, I don't have the ability like I normally do in post to level it up and compress it and EQ it and really make it sound as good as you're used to hearing my audio. And so people with really crappy USB mics end up sounding better than I do, um, which mostly means I sound a lot quieter on live streams than guests who are using USB mics because my gear gets, you know, recorded at a much, much lower level than what we are used to hearing on the internet. And when you're using a USB mic, essentially the software is just leveling up the the uh, the signal for you. I'm not sure if I did a good job of explaining that, but the point is I wanted to be able to adjust the sound of my audio before it even hits the computer so that when I do a live stream, my computer doesn't have to do any extra processing. It doesn't have to deal with real time processing of effects, which introduces latency and bogs down the CPU of the machine. Um, and, uh, and so I ended up picking up this piece of gear, which was really popular like 10 years ago. And these are not that easy to find now. And I won a bid for a fantastic price on eBay with 30 seconds left. <laughs> Let's take a look at what it is, what all the functions do, and then we're gonna do some audio samples and I'll show you uh, using my trusty uh, GT50, my Groove Tubes uh, large diaphragm condenser over here. First thing though, I have to click on this light, which is gonna screw up this exposure just a little bit, but it's so that this camera can see the Joe Meek 3Q. Okay, so first things first, what is actually on this box. Now it's gonna is a little tricky for me because this thing is sitting below the microphone. I'm looking down through it, so I don't have a great field of view here. Hopefully I'll be able to do this. So what's here on the channel strip? Well, for starters, we've got our preamp right here. This is the input gain of your sound source. So at the moment, I have an XLR plugged in on the back. I've got the uh, the microphone going in XLR into the uh, into the preamp. And I have gain here, and I've got on the back. I've got my phantom power selected. It's on the back of the uh, of the box. So phantom power is on because this is a condenser mic that needs 48 volts of phantom power. So check. We've got our phantom power. We've got a nice healthy signal. So what you're hearing right now is essentially 
my microphone hitting the preamp of the Joe Meek and then going into my PreSonus uh, audio box 44 VSL over here. It's a little bit of older piece of gear, but I still love this thing. Okay, so I can check right here in the uh, in the computer. Um, I'm hitting right around negative nine to negative 12 dB, which is what you always, always, always hear me saying when it comes to recorded audio. You wanna record between negative nine and negative 12 dB. By and large, I'm hitting right in the sweet spot. So this is the right volume for recorded audio. In and of itself, this is a very, very warm, beautiful sound. This preamp is really, really designed to be heard. So the preamps that are built into the digital interface, my audio interface, this uh, audio box over here, those are designed to be transparent. They're just simply there to give you enough gain to choose how much gain you have. And their whole selling point, PreSonus, their selling point of those XMAX preamps is that they are transparent. This is what it sounds like running directly into the audio box. And this is what it sounds like running the Joe Meek into the audio box. This, this is a piece of warm analog gear that is designed to be heard. And you can hear that if I simply wanted to warm up my tone, I could run it through this and it would get nice, warm, buttery, smooth audio. But we're not going to stop there because we've got a compressor. Now this is a optical compressor. There's different types of compressors. That's really neither here nor there for this video. An optical compressor, just like this entire piece of gear, is designed to be heard. It is designed to be heard. So when I click this on, you should immediately hear the sound change. So right now I'm getting between two and four decibels of gain reduction, which you'll notice right here. These LEDs tell you how much compression is actually happening, how much gain reduction. In other words, how much gain is the compressor taking out of our signal? And you'll notice that it's flashing between two and four, which means we're doing a moderate amount of compression. We're not squashing the signal, but it's not by any stretch a light touch. So first let's talk about how this is actually compressing the sound. There is a fixed ratio. Now, those of you who've taken my Audio 101 for Content Creators online course, and thank you for that, by the way, you know that typically the first thing you're going to do is decide what ratio of compression that you're getting. And the ratio could be 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1. It could be anywhere, right? 2 to 1, 8 to 1, anywhere. And essentially what you're deciding is how much you're squashing the signal. So the quick example is if you have a 2 to 1 ratio, then... For every two decibels your gain goes up, it's only going to al allow your gain to go up by one decibel. So two to one is squashing every two decibels down to simply one decibel. Four to one, for every four decibels it goes up in volume, it's squashing it only down to one decibel, right? So the higher your ratio, four to one ratio is a much more squashed signal than a two to one ratio, essentially. Well, this particular unit is fixed at five to one. You cannot change it. That is just how it's built. So you need to know that. And that is by no means a light touch. It's really easy to go overboard with this thing. You could really easily use way too much compression. This knob right here, the one that says compress, that is essentially your threshold. You're choosing with that one at what point do you want the compressor to kick in to the audio signal. So I'm starting now with the compressor completely off. It's not on at all. And I'm going to slowly increase the compress knob, which means I'm increasing the threshold, which means it's starting to compress more and more as I keep talking. And now you can really hear it's barely letting my voice do anything at all. This is not a good sound. So if I back it off until we get to a point which without even looking at the knob, I feel like it's right around here where you're actually, wow, I did that without looking, yeah. So just using my ears, right around here, I'm getting a good two to four decibels of gain reduction, which means I'm taming the loudest stuff, the transients, the peaks, without really squashing the overall signal. So I am very, very happy with that level of compression. Now we need to talk for a second though about the attack and release. Attack is how quickly the compressor kicks in. Release is how long it holds on before it lets go. And typically for spoken word, you want about three milliseconds 
for the attack and about 30 to 40 milliseconds for the release. So as you can see, the attack is set to zero, which means it's kicking in immediately all the time. And as I go up, you're gonna hear that it lets the beginning of phrases through a little bit more as I go up because the attack isn't kicking in so quickly. Well, let's set it around three to four. So what we're doing is we're catching those quick transients, the ones that come in really fast, the quick T's and B's like that. And so we're catching those, uh, but then it's letting the rest of the signal through. Normally I would set the release, as I said, to 30 to 40 milliseconds, but the problem here is that I don't have the option to do that. I have release from 100 milliseconds or 0.1 seconds all the way up to, I think, three seconds. Yeah, so I have three seconds release here, which means it's never really going to let go if I keep talking. And all the way at the very bottom, I have a uh, 100 milliseconds release. So I basically have the release set all the way down for this. Now you're hearing the signal completely uncompressed. And here it is with all the settings that we just kicked into place. So you do hear that it gets a little bit quieter and that the tone has definitely changed. It makes my voice a little bit beefier, a little bit fatter because it's keeping everything in line. And that's the beauty of a hardware compressor. And now we get to the fun stuff. We have a three band EQ here, which of course Joe Meek calls the MeQ, the MeQ. So, on our EQ panel, we've got a low cut or boost at 80 hertz. Then we get to choose the mid-range frequency from 300 hertz all the way up to 6 kilohertz. We choose which frequency we want this knob here to affect. So we get plus or minus on one of our mid-range frequencies, which we can choose ourselves. And then we have a fixed high frequency band of 12 kilohertz, which is designed to add some air into uh, into the signal. Now, if you're using a compressor, you almost always need to add back in some high range frequencies because again, with the compressor off, you can hear that there's a lot more of the high range of my voice coming in. And as soon as the compressor's on, because of the nature of an optical compressor, it darkens the tone quite a bit. So we're gonna use the EQ to brighten it back up and, and just uh, uh, touch up the signal here. So now I've got the EQ engaged and you can hear immediately that it's brightened up and I'm gonna talk you through what I've got going on in the EQ in order to do that. Just a little bit of gain, an extra decibel or two in the 80 hertz range and that's because I have the low cut filter engaged on this microphone. I've got everything 75 hertz and below scooped out with a physical button on this microphone. So I'm adding a little bit of the low range here, the 80 hertz back into my voice using the EQ. Then right here, I've got the mid-range set to five kilohertz because that is where you get the clarity in a voice. And what I'm doing to that is I'm adding about three decibels. And finally, I'm adding about a decibel and a half or two decibels at 12 kilohertz for a little bit extra air. So let me do each of these one at a time. Okay, so what you're listening to right now is the compressed sound with all of the EQ set to zero. So nothing's happening. And now I'm going to start getting rid of 80 hertz. I'm just gonna take it down and down and down and down and down until you hear the low end of my voice completely disappear. And now the low end of my voice is back. And if I wanna add a little bit more low end, like a decibel or two, I can do that. And as I go up and up and up, you hear this gets ridiculous when I'm at 15 decibels of extra bass. And if I come back all the way to zero or not, here we are with the regular signal, and I'm just gonna give it about one decibel right there. Now let's play around with the mid frequencies. We're gonna set the mids to about 500, which is where a lot of people have a nasally sound, and in fact, I do uh, as well. And what I can do now is I can take out a little bit of the nasally part of my voice. And as I go further and further, you hear that suddenly it sounds like I'm kind of underwater because I've got none of the mid-range of my voice left. And as I bring it back and I bring it back and I bring it back, now we're back at zero. And here, if I start to add mid-range, you hear it gets really honky and really, really weird very, very quickly. So I'm going to bring that back to zero. That is just at 500 hertz, which is the mid-range, but let's say I want to bring out the clarity in my voice. I'm going to set the frequency band to 5 kilohertz, and let's see what happens if I take it out. So I'm going to take out all the clarity in my voice, and it gets a lot harder to understand what I'm saying because the clarity is gone. And as I bring the clarity back until we get to zero, now you hear what it is 
at the zero mark with nothing being done. And now I'm gonna boost the clarity in my voice up at five kilohertz until now it is clearly overdriving the amplifier and we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna move back all the way to the zero point. The reason you started to hear it overdriving is because four to six kilohertz, that range of a voice, that is the harshest, those are the harshest frequencies. So you have to be very gentle in this range. So I'm just gonna add about three decibels to the five kilohertz range of my voice. And now you hear that I've got a little bit more clarity going on. And finally, we're looking at the 12 kilohertz range. So if I back it off, you'll hear that all of the air disappears from the top of my voice. There's no top left at all. And if I add it back, we finally come back to zero. And then if I just give it a little boost, and then if we keep going, and it's gonna get really bright and really awful very, very quickly. You don't want this. So let's bring it back to zero. And then let's just add two decibels or so of air. And suddenly we've got a sound like this. So let's go all the way back to raw signal, and then I'll show you both the compressor and the EQ on at the same time. So here we go with the raw unprocessed signal that is simply hitting the preamp. And now you're hearing the compressed and EQ'd signal, which should sound more like the radio broadcast voice that I normally achieve in post-production. And so there we have it. You could hear the complete difference in my voice from going raw into, well, it wasn't even raw because it was hitting this um, this preamp, very warm analog preamp here. But the difference between going in raw through this preamp versus the compressor and the EQ, which was doing a bit of extra work. So this obviously isn't just to be used for spoken word or narration. You can use this and should use this for vocals, for guitar, there's all kinds of things. On the back here, you have a bunch of different inputs and outputs so you can really mess around with your signal chain. You can run a guitar directly into this with a, with a, a quarter inch in. Uh, you could actually run stuff out of your computer back through your interface into this and then take this back into the interface so you could take something you've already recorded and you could run it out of the computer process it through this piece of hardware and re-record it into uh, into the computer which is very very cool but of course my purpose was to use this for better leveling and better tone that I normally achieve in post-production while doing live streams. So let me know if you have any specific questions about this, if you wanna see me demo this on vocals, on guitar, on acoustic guitar, with a microphone, on a plugged in guitar, if you want me to really push it really hard, like what do you wanna see me do with this? Cause I'm looking for an excuse to play with it. So go ahead and uh, toss that into the comments below. Uh, I will of course include a link to this, although you can't get them new anywhere anymore. So whatever links I can find are in the, uh, in the description below. And uh, hey, thanks so much for sticking with me. If you're really interested in, uh, in leveling up your audio, you can always check out my Audio 101 for Content Creators online course. So many of you have purchased it. I really appreciate that. I think you'll find, I don't think, I know you'll find it is just incredibly beneficial. There's four hours uh, uh, of instruction across 32 videos or something like that. Okay, I'm running out of things to say. Thanks so much for sticking with me and always remember that our world is a shared experience. So sound better and level up. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just combining all my different channels now. We'll see you guys soon.